All right, we ready? We'll do half an hour max. And okay, cool. It's Pep Talk UK. It's Pro Bees. I'm delighted to uh, be joined by two special guests in the building from different parts of the globe, USA and London, Brixton. Spencer Ferron in the building, historian, former promoter, Sky Sports ex pundit as well, doing big things with the fighters, right? My guy from day. Spence, how you doing, bro? You good? I'm blessed, man. All the best for speaking to you. You've also got a special guest. big up my guy, Kurt. Big up Kurt, Kurt in the man. building. Kurt in the building, man. I'd like to uh, introduce some counter punch boxing news. Kurt Deville, a man uh, has got a high work effort. He's licking out the, the topics, man. Day by day, videos and videos, topics on topics. Crazy, man. Crazy. You're moving, you're you know moving what? crazy I, out there. I respect that. It's like this guy don't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's uh it's it, look it from the uk to the us of a it's a time difference so you gotta be you gotta create content for certain time frames so what i normally do i'll i'll work at night and then i'll release them as i go to sleep you guys are waking up you know sometimes and then uh you know by the time i wake up then I can just comment and then take it from there. So, you know, it's crazy. But, uh, that's what it's about, especially in this uh, pandemic. So, Kurt, I've got to say it, man. You, you want bad mofo, man. You had to dig up the old discussion, the old debate about Deontay Wilder. And um, yeah, we saw the Spencer interview um, back mm -hmm. in February. And um, mate, you just reopened the discussion. So I had to bring Spencer in, man. Whose fault was it Absolutely. that Deontay Wilder lost against Tyson Fury back in February? Guys, it's an well, open I mean, forum, man. I'll, I'll let the man take it first. The knowledge, please. Thank you very much, bro. The, the, whose fault was it? Whose fault was it? it was, Jay Diaz, it was, Mark Breland? No, 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 no. It was Deontay Wilder's fault why he lost the fight. Because effectively, he's a fighter. And what will happen is, we will, we will tend to forget who trained who. Like, there's been certain guys, like standout guys, Deontay Wilder, to all of his credit, he was a world champion for five years, right? He had, what was it? it was, that was his 11th world title defense. Yeah. That, that is a high percentage. You got to go, like, Ali didn't have 11 title defenses. First, first back, like when he first won the title, February 25th, um, 1964 against Sonny Liston, all the way up to um, his his last fight against Zara Foley, uh, before getting wrongfully um, stripped of his crowns. Uh, he had ten title defenses off the bat. First time, second time around, it was nine. So, what Deontay Wilder accomplished, I can't take away nothing from Deontay Wilder, and off the bat. I gotta say, it's easy for me to point the finger at Jay Diaz and 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 Shelly Pinko and this guy and that guy and all the rest of it. But at the end of the day, when all said and done, it's the fighter that has to go into the ring. So the only one you should hold his hands up and take the blame and say, "Well, it was down to me and be a man, a man up on this." Thing. So mm -hmm. I say, the person for blame is got to be Deontay Wilder. Hey, could it? Are you going to counter punch that, as you say in your videos? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, well, it it me counter punching it. It comes back. It comes back to Wilder. I mean, you could look at what he's been doing, what he, how he was trained, uh, what he did in training. He said it himself that he skipped a lot of stuff in training. But who skipped it? Him. He skipped those okay. things. He admitted. It. He said, "Hey, man, I admit it." And he he, he just he just came real in an interview like. I, look, I got away with a lot, you know, in training. A lot of things I didn't do and a lot of things I think he didn't make him do. But then here's the thing. You want to do this. You want to keep that work ethic. You don't want to, hey, man, let's skip this because I don't have to. You know, this is benefiting you because you're going to get in that ring, not JD's, not Mark Breland. And by the way, Mark Breland, he said, hey, Deontay Wilder doesn't listen to me. He's also said that. 
So, and I think Breland said that because he doesn't want to make himself fully accountable for Deontay Wilder performing a certain way. So at the end of the day, it's all about Wilder and what he wants to learn to benefit him. Because again, he's going to be the one fighting. So it's up to Wilder. And I rehashed that video with Spencer Farron. It's because it was new information that I didn't know. I didn't know Mark Breland was crying outside his dressing room. That changed the whole game. Because at this point, you know, I know they're, they're pointing the finger at someone because it has to be someone else's fault. But to see Mark Breland knowing in his heart he did something that he's supposed to do and he did it, okay, and then you guys locked him out of the – who does that? At any time, did, you, did any fighter that I can remember, have they been locked outside the dressing room because you took an L? I mean, <laughs> you know, that, that changed the whole game for me, and, and I, I had to counterpunch it. So big ups to you, because I didn't even know about that. I mean, I thought I heard and read and seen every interview that it could possibly be about Wilder losing or whatever. But unfortunately, I guess, obviously, I didn't, <laughs> you know. So I had to bring that to the forefront. Kurt, you, you mean, Mr. Counterpunch, you got to listen to Pep Talk. <laughs> Pep Talk, Pep Talk yeah. do the really stuff out here, right? Right, right. And, and it's like. I heard from from good uh, good source, good information. You know I mean, uh, it was a it was a former undisputed champion that told me. I'm not going to call him <laughs> his name, but I'm sure you call him that, right? And so, right, right. They were the ones that told me, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and said how disgraceful it was. So, it, it is what it is. Um, but then since then, it's like. Uh, I speak to Malik Scott, so he reached out to me. So, so it was like that. I'm surprised you didn't see it, Kurt, because the pep talk thing it went viral, so everybody was using it. Everyone was using it on on, on their Instagram and blah. He was getting mad numbers on Instagram. It was like it sounded like 300,000. Like yeah, it right. got on Instagram, so it got it got really it got mad numbers. So it was using all the press in the UK, in America, yeah. and nobody from Deontay Wilder's camp said it wasn't true. Right, right. But Malik Scott. So Malik Scott reached out to me and said, "No, nah, it weren't true, but there was animosity there. But it weren't, it weren't like that." But I'm saying, well, why was there animosity? Because a guy stopped a fight to prolong your career. Because a guy knows. Mark Breland knows. Mark Breland knows boxing. I remember when Mark Breland came over March. He came to the UK. When I say over here, he came to the UK. Uh, was it March of 1990 and defeated Lloyd Hunnigan? And even though Lloyd Hunting, it was, it was, it was, he ran through the middle at the time, but that was a very good performance that Mark Breland put in against Lloyd Hunting. I remember him throwing Lloyd Hunting with a jab. Mark Breland knows boxing. Mark Breland was sparring with Tommy Hearns, and we're talking 1983, he was down in the Chrome Gym, right? This is before he won the Olympic gold medal, mm -hmm. right? I think there's one on YouTube where Tommy Hearns hits him with a right hand, buzzes him. And they said, just walk it off, shake it out, and did that, came right back in and carried on sparring. Mark Breland was, seriously, Mark, I think the deal that Mark Breland got from the Dubas was like, he gets $100,000 a year for life. That's the deal that he got with him. So, I'm, Mark Breland loves boxing, man. So, maybe Mark Breland was safeguarding himself a little bit when he's saying, well, I speak to Deontay and he don't listen. But I think it's more to do with Deontay Wilder's arrogance, knowing that. And it's, it's going to be hard to, to, to know that, to contain not being arrogant if you could punch like Deontay Wilder. It's ridiculous mm. punching up, right? right? I give him that. But I've noticed in history, when we have ridiculous punches, right, like a la George Foreman, like Ernie Shavers, technically they lack a lot of stuff because they are very reliant on that punching power. And Deontay Wilder showed me in his first remains to Vern fight that he could actually box because he did. He boxed it long, mm. he boxed it long, kicked it long, he's popping out. And I said, well, this guy could actually go and do something here, you know? But right. then ego falls into place again. I've seen it time and time again with so many fighters. Once you start scoring that knockout, and you think, well, that's the thing that's gonna to, to, to raise my gravitas. Let me just knock out guys, that's what I'm doing. And you really look like a buffoon in certain of your fights. And you could actually do better than that. 
And he hasn't done that because he's relied on his punching power. So, I, you know what I mean? If he doesn't fix things and fix things fast, he's not going to come back. Wow. I, I think, Kurt, it's interesting that Team Wilder have retained the services of Mark Breeland. Uh, he's still in the camp, despite all those reports about him being outside the dressing room. I'm pretty oh, concerned in Joshua's system. Sorry, you back guys. now, yeah? Well, my, internet, my internet went yeah. off, man. You know what I mean? These North London um, yeah. internet providers, man. So, hold on. We st- yeah, I think it's still recording. Um, okay, cool. We'll run that back. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. despite Mark Breeland um, being left outside the dressing room, um, it would seem that Deontay Wilder still retained the services of Mark Breeland. Um, What's your response to that? Do you, do you feel like he shouldn't stay because he was humiliated and he should really um, leave the whole camp overall? No, he should, he should stay with a guy. Hmm. He should stay with a guy, but Deontay Wilder needs to listen. Right? That is it. And what makes it worse is like, because we've got this glove gate scenario where everyone's saying, oh, the gloves and oh, this. And, right, because we hear all of this nonsense, I'm just going to keeping it 100, right? Mm. The gloves didn't beat um, Deontay Wilder. The skill of Tyson Fury did. And we need to address the fact that he was outskilled and he needs to go back to the drawing board. That's it. I don't want to hear nothing else about this, all this kind of nonsense. And I know it's like a lot of, I'm going to tell you how it is, I know a lot of black Americans were upset to see this white dude do a number on, on Deontay Wilder in the way that he did in Black History Month. Let's call it as it is, mm. right? It's only real people like Kirk who, who is, you know what I mean, an unsullied majority in the fact that he's knowledgeable enough to call it as it is, irrespective of all these other uh, uh, black groups that are pro Deontay Wilder. And I'm saying you could be pro someone. People actually think I dislike Deontay Wilder. I don't dislike him. I'm just a person that speaks the truth. That's it. You know what I mean? I don't care who. As long as I, I'm comfortable with myself and the God that I serve to speak the truth. I don't think you're going to be up, upset by it. I'm just telling you a haze. I'm not eating from you by speaking the truth. I'm not not eating from you by speaking the truth. I'm going to do me. Hey, you know, interesting question that just kind of popped in my mind. Um, To you, Kurt, we saw Tyson Fury in the last fight change his team, the backroom staff, right? Right. That served him well, yeah? It served him really well. It did. Is that something that Wilder should really consider before the rematch in um, December? Well, he's supposed to bring in two new people. We don't know who those people are, but Mm. he's already threw that out there that it was snakes in his camp. I didn't like that either because who the hell are the snakes? We're not going to know that. (laughs) And We we were just talking about Mark Breland. Well, we do know um, it was um, said that it was animosity in his team between, you know, Mark and, you know, uh, Wilder or whatever, but, if you notice in the press conference, the post press conference that Mark Breland wasn't there. It was Shelly Finkel and it was JD's, but it was no Mark Breland. So if you look at that, you could, okay, well, maybe they didn't want him there. So maybe the dressing room story was accurate because he wasn't there in it. You know, he's the trainer. He called the shot. He should have been there. He's the one that stopped the fight, if you think about it. But to answer your question, no, I think that he shouldn't bring anyone new in. I mean, I mean, I don't think he should. I think he should listen. I think hopefully that the loss would help him say, okay, now let me stop cutting corners. Let me let me start actually listening because this guy knows what he's doing. Now I see what you meant, Mark Breland. 
now we need to really do this and focus on that instead of, whoa, well, uh, why did you stop the fight? You stopped the fight because you're getting beat up. You're getting drugged. You're getting tossed around. I mean, you know, those knockdowns, times he fell, they could have actually been knocked. I know one he slipped, but, you know, he had two recorded official knockdowns. But the other ones, he, him, he was just falling because he was fatigued and out of it. But at the end of the day, man, you know, you weren't going to win, and there would have been more knockdowns if that fight would have continued. You know, and then that would have been really embarrassing for him. But, um, no, I don't, I don't think that he should get rid of Mark Breland, but I think the question was, should Mark Breland stay with him? I think it's his choice. I think, you know, if he felt that disrespected, maybe he should leave. And then you know what could happen? Like Tyson Fury, he's the, you know, he's the master yeah, yeah, yeah. of mind games. He would hire him. He would hire him. He, he did, he did say that. He did say that. Yeah. I might just hire yeah. Mark Breland. Mm -hmm. So um, Spencer. Yes, sir. We mentioned the post-fight press conference, right? Just running it back, right? And Jay Diaz was very critical of he the talent. He threw being. Mark Breland under the bus. You know what I mean? And he was mm. very smarmy when he said, oh, well, you know, we don't do things like that. You know, we like for our fighter to go out on a shield, but, you know, Mark threw the towel in. Listen to me. It made no difference because Kenny Vegas was going to jump in and stop the fight anyway. Right. Right? And now, uh, Kenny, I, I remember when Kenny Bayless was a... Uh, 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 Nevada State uh, uh, steward for the boxing commission. So mm -hmm. if you go, if you go watch uh, Hagler Hearns, what was that April fifteenth, nine eighty six? You sorry, nine eighty five. My apologies. You will see Kenny Bayless there. Kenny Bayless has been around boxing for a very long time. You see, Kenny Bayless was always in a suit. He'd always have this little funny kind of jittery walk. But he'd always be there. He was a steward for, for the Nevada State. So we're all the big fights. So he's been around all the big fights for a very, very long time. Right? A very long time. That's 35 years ago, Hagler Hearns. Right? So he's been in the game. So he knows boxing. He knows to the fact that, Rod, this guy, you're getting beat. Because he was going to stop the fight. No ifs or buts. He was going to stop the fight. And they used Mark Breland as a scapegoat. Because if Kenny Bayless stopped the fight, what would have been the complaints? There wouldn't have been any complaints. But they said, well, Mark Breland did it. Mark should have known better because you know what? Let me go out on my show. And sometimes fighters have got too much damn pride in themselves anyway. Do you know what I mean? And sometimes fighters need saving from themselves. Right? right. And there was no conceivable way that Deontay Wilder was going to win that fight. Um, and I didn't even have Deontay Wilder win a round of that fight. Hmm. And that's the sad thing about it. If it was in there and it was competitive and it got stopped in when it got stopped, then yeah, we could complain. But the fight wasn't even competitive. And that's the truth. It wasn't. You were swinging out wide with your right hand. It, it was sad, man. It was sad. It was sad. And he did look like a raw novice. That's what he looked like. Mm. Um, Kurt. Uh, the, the, like I said, the third fight is not far away, all right? Now, a lot of people in the boxing community are looking at Tyson Fury like he's um, Optimus Prime right now. You know what I mean? You know when the Transformers <laughs> all form into Voltron? Like, he's unstoppable now. How does Deontay Wilder deal with Tyson Fury now? We're seeing a peak Tyson Fury now. What could he do in the third fight? He has to learn how to box. I mean, and if he can do that in this X amount of time, you know, it'd be very, very impressive if he could change his game plan. I mean, I don't think he will. I mean, I honestly don't think he will. I, I think he will. I mean, you got a guy that's looking for excuses. And then if he's not giving excuses, other people are giving it for him. You got all these channels are saying that, you know, the glove gate stuff, you know, that that came up and it died down for a little bit. <laughs> then it came back up again. It did, you know, like a, like yeah. a fire, you know, like a roaring fire. It just <laughs> it ran back up and you were looking at it like, okay, no, we've discovered a new boxing uh, picture with Tyson Fury's gloves. So, you know, I'm always like, okay, let me see, you know, um, they say Missouri's a show me state. So I'm like, Hey, show me. 
So I go and I watch the fight again. I'm looking at these gloves. I'm watching these gloves. And they look nothing like the ridges. I mean, this one looked just, it, it was definitely Photoshopped, you know. Mm-hmm. And the photographer that they say took the pictures, they say he verified it. So I called this guy. I call him. I leave messages, voice messages, text messages, emails. I inbox him on Facebook. Not a reply. In fact, he's taken down every picture of that gallery. Thank you. And, and, and I'm like, well, you guys are saying, well, Tyson Fury done that. Well, how do we know Tyson Fury done that? You know, if you guys, if, if okay, let, let's say, let, let's look at it like this. If Wilder is pulling the strings to these channels, he knows about this stuff. He knows about Glove Gate. He hasn't said anything about it, but he knows about it. So if he's pulling the strings of these fighters, he could have paid that guy, hey, take this whole gallery down. So you can't prove that it was Photoshopped or not. So a lot of people looking at Fury, and it could have been Deontay, Team Wilder. So you're looking at it like this because none of this stuff can be proved. Like I'm saying, the doctor. What's the name of the doctor? What kind of doctor? You know, you got a dent in your head. Okay, show us some x-rays. See, those type of things, it's not concrete, so therefore they're rumored propaganda. You know, but the sad thing about it is no one's talking about what we're talking about. How can Wilder actually improve? How can he improve? That's what they should be talking about. They're really talking about this other mm-hmm. stuff. Well, I'm going to put this to, to Spencer. I mean, I think Kurt, we spoke off air and a lot of people forget that Deontay Wilder did put down Tyson Fury twice in the first fight. So there what is... What Tyson Fury was it though? A Tyson Fury coming back after okay, a so I respond case. Yeah. The two guys that Tyson Fury fought prior to fighting Deontay Wilder, I guarantee you, Tyson Fury wouldn't even hire these aspiring partners. <laughs> right? Let's just say as it is. It was two also ran guys. You mean so also ran that I even forgot their names? I don't care. You mean, I don't to... Safari, yeah. No, I know, I know, I'm joking. I don't want to clog my <laughs> knowledge with these idiots, right? They're idiots. Right? <laughs> Period. I've said it. Right? Tyson Fury want to hire him for sparring. But yet, he went in there and boxed Deontay Wilder when he was still like a roly-poly man. Right? He had like Mitchell, like the Mitchell man a bit around the stomach, <laughs> midriff. He didn't look, you know, do you know what I mean? But what I do know about Tyson Fury, and if you go check any videos of me, I tip Tyson Fury to beat Deontay Wilder the first time. The second fight, I guaranteed people that Tyson Fury is going to stop Deontay Wilder, right? Oh, I got uproar from Black America. I need, I want these Black Americans to realize my wife is Black, my children are Black, right? I'm down with the struggle. Calm down. Black lives matter. But I've got to speak the rules, right? And if you're speaking about a, a, a sport that I have studied profusely since the age of five years old, that's 41 years of my life. Right? Don't try and mug me off for having a, 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 my opinion that I believe holds more weight than their opinion because I know they, they believe they study boxing. Everyone knows who I am on this thing. And that's not even me being, I study boxing ridiculously, right? Because I get a kick, I get a buzz out of it. So when I'm looking at this sport and I'm seeing guys just talking nonsense because they're saying, well, we got to just back our guy no matter what. You're backing your guy in stupidity. Period. It's embarrassing. You know what I mean? They should be sending donations to counterpunch boxing for only Kurt being one of the real black guys who's speaking the truth, who's speaking opinionated facts and it's research facts. Do you know what I mean? These guys, I'm, t- I'm telling you, listen, man, it's all cool being pro-black, but don't be pro-stupid at the same time. <laughs> wow. <Yeah. clears throat> well, you can't have it both ways. You can't. Mm. I mean, you can't say, and here's the thing about with Wilder. If you make so many excuses for Wilder, how is that improving Wilder? It's not. You know, it's not. You, you, and then if Wilder's believing his fan base, it's more deceiving Wilder. 
it's more of the same people around Wilder making Wilder believe that, hey, it wasn't you that really lost Wilder. It was because Tyson Fury really cheated. If he really cheated, that means you're not as bad because he's a cheater and he doesn't get credit for beating you. So you never lost. So what happens? He goes in there and gets beat, beat again. So you got to make more excuses? You keep lying to this guy? Stop lying to him. You know, just tell him, like, hey, um, Dante's Boxing Nation. He went from Wilder's going to have to find a new game plan to Tyson Fury cheated. Well, wait a minute. You first said he needed a new game plan in order to beat Fury. Now you you believe in this same BS of, oh, man, uh, uh, Wilder was cheated, and, man, and, and he has a dent in his head, and his water was spiked. Dude, how many of these things are you going to come up with? I'm Wilder, so Wilder hit Fury, but what was the problem? Fury didn't go nowhere. He didn't yeah. hit the canvas. That was scary. I think that spooked him. I think that scared. I think that spooked him. I'm not gonna say scared. I ain't gonna do that. <laughs> I think it, I think it spooked him. I think he was like, "Oh, this didn't work. It always works. It always works." I hit Brazil. He's down. Ortiz twice. He's down. Mm. Now I hit this guy. He's not going anywhere. So if we're gonna look at gloves, let's look at Wilder's gloves. You know, did you have too much cushion? For the pushing. Yeah. You, know, you know what I mean? Because it, it, it's like, well, you hit this guy. Then I'll see these, these were flush punches. He caught this guy in the temple. And this is round one. So actually he improved at what he was doing. And I keep telling people, Wilder, it took him how long? It took him nine rounds to hit him in the first fight. Right? Mm -hmm. With that mm -hmm. right hand. He caught him with jabs and bloodied his nose on the fourth. I get that. That was cool. But his money punch, it took him nine rounds. Nine. He did that in round one in the second fight. So it was an accomplishment. It just didn't work. So what Spencer was saying, hey, that more than likely is true. Maybe Fury wasn't where he's supposed to have been. You know, the ring rust. Yeah, the two fights helped him, but it didn't make him 100% when he no. fought Wilder? No. And I, look, I got it wrong. It's not that I was right. I thought Wilder was going to knock his head off. I said, oh, man, they're, they're, they're picking that fight. Because Fury knows he was on drugs. He was doing this, that, and the other. And he was dealing all type of mental stuff, right? I thought that he was going to lose. I was wrong. It's okay. It's okay to be wrong. But I was wrong. I thought Wilder was beating him to get a better profile for getting more money on the Joshua fight. You remember? That's the big fight. <laughs> no one's yeah. talking about. Now, <laughs> Joshua. He's supposed to fight Joshua because Eddie Hearn, you know, he was out there. Hey, we don't even know who he is. You know, he's from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. We don't know who he is. And I know that pissed Wilder off, but they were like, fine. Fury comes out, calls out Wilder, you know, has a couple fights or whatever, and then fights Wilder and does the unthinkable. Not only does he survive two knockdowns, he also outpoints Wilder. So, you know, then he comes, takes a whole year off, gets back to where he's supposed to do, Minus all the other stuff he was doing for the previous three years. Now they fight. Now we have a different result. Now, don't we? So now this guy has improved. Now it's time for you to improve. But you won't improve if you're buying into excuses from your fans. Hey, I am going to use your phrase. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to counter punch that, right? Okay. Because we haven't got long left. But we've got to look at the... The stone cold facts, right? The man has lost right. once. The man has lost once in 40 odd fights, yeah? Right. Has the criticism been overboard? Pardon me? He's only lost once. What criticism? The criticism of Wilder not being any good, etc., etc. Limited. Who's, who's turned around and said Wilder ain't no good? Mm. Wilder won a bronze medal at the Olympics. No one ain't said Wilder ain't good, you know? Mm. Right. I'm yeah, saying yeah. he's limited in ability because he's become reliant on his punching power. And because he's got yes men around him, they'll gas him up as well. So he's just going in there gas. Like, boy, what I gotta do is just touch my, my guy on his chin, you know, he's done. No, brother. You know what I mean? Go back, learn the fundamentals of boxing, go back and be and, and have due diligence in learning the fundamentals of boxing. And I think John said, well, they could be okay. I would because technically, I think the worst ever heavyweight champion. Technically, in the 30s, Primo Carnero. 
I would say, was the right. worst technical boxer. Yeah, that ambling out, right? The worst, right? Certain times with Deontay Wilder fights, he, he makes Primo Carnero look like Muhammad Ali. I'm just telling you how it is, right? And I don't think it's because he lacks the technical prowess. I think he lacks the maturity to be more reliant on box Take away Deontay Wilder's punching power. What else does the man do good? Gone. We've seen that in the fight. Mm. Yeah, well, exactly. What else does he do good? Take away his punching power. What else does he do good? Does he throw a really good left jab to the body, then come upstairs with a, with a left hand, so jab to the body, jab to the head? I think not, because he kind of arcs his hand when he's going to throw his jab anyway. So mm -hmm. if, you're, if I'm sitting down and I can see this, you don't think Tyson Fury can see this? You don't, you know what I mean? You don't think Sugar Hill can see this? You know what I mean? A guy who, who uh, uh, who's the other guy in his corner? In Tyson Fury's corner. Andy Lee? Andy Lee, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and next thing, Andy Lee knows boxing. Trying mm -hmm. all this part. I've spoken to him loads, I've known him for years. Guy knows boxing, right? You don't think they can see that? Come on. So, no one's not complete. Take away the attribute of punching power. What else is, is Deontay Wilder left with? Mm. What, what else he left with? I'll tell you what he's left He's He's left with that he could, he's, a, he's very good at twerking. <laughs> that's, that's what he's left with. And I've said it, right? And I'm yeah. sick and tired of all these guys thinking I've got something against Deontay Wilder. I haven't. I just want the guy to come better than what, what he's come with. Right, and when you're a lover of, and when you, a lover of this sport, and you've been entrenched, I'm entrenched with skill. I don't care the skin tone of the person that's that's showing me the skill. I'm mm. entrenched. I am an admirer of boxing skill. Right, even though we would enjoy watching a Gatti Wood kind of fight, right? Mm, sure. Which love it. which was which was yeah exactly. You're gonna love it, but there was no technical ability in there. There was no wow. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm mm. telling people now. I prefer to watch. Mike McCullum versus um, James Tommy, 1991, than watching, than watching any of the Gatty Wood fights. I prefer watching Sugar Ray Leonard, uh, Wolf of Benitez, 1979, November 1979, than watching Gatty Wood. I'm just being real. Because I am drawn to skill. I love skill. I love looking like, wow, this is incredible. Yeah, we do like the crash bang wallet, but you can't learn nothing from that. I've got a young kid in the gym, and they come to me and say, oh, Spence, what fight shall I be watching? I ain't going to tell go watch Gatty Wood. What are they going to learn from that? They're going to learn to get to, 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 to do, do, do. That's what they're going to learn. Yeah, to take punishment, yeah. Right. That's not, that's, I'm, 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 I like skills, period, because that's the genius of boxing yeah. in my great. mindset. Great counterpunch. Great counterpunch, because... You have fighters, and then you, if they look at fights like that, like Rocky, Arturo, Gotti, Ward, mm -hmm. they're going to expect to get hit. And since they expect to get hit, they're not going to work more on their skill of not getting hit. It's the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. You know, look, I would rather see, you know, a Floyd Mayweather versus uh, Edis Landy Lada because you know those guys are not going to get hit much because their elusiveness, their boxing mm -hmm. ability. Now, the people that are accustomed to seeing people take punishment, which is casual fans and people that like to see violence, <laughs> they're going to want, they're going to, ooh, boo, it sucks, get out of here, Mayweather, you guys are running. You know, you're going to get that because they don't respect what the true skill is. And, and they back don't, to Wilder. They, they don't because you know why? Because they can't comprehend it. No right. one. And because they can't comprehend it, when they see, majestic skills like demonstrated by a Perno Whitaker, their, their limited lack of boxing knowledge and also uh, mental aptitude to the sweet science, they, the comprehension level has gone out the window, so therefore they will not be appreciative of what they're watching. I mean, and when you can, when you can appreciate that skill, that level of skill, 
then it's like, wow, your, your mouth's open wide. You think, oh my goodness gracious, I've seen something that's very, very special. And right. unfortunately, certain people just don't get that. So I just hope that Deontay Wilder can readjust because I, I hear that Goose is going to be working with him. That's one of the guys that's making mm. He's been rumored for a little while, right? I'm not knocking Goose. He's a good trainer. He's a very good trainer when he's working with Michael now, right? Uh, and I would, I would just hope that something else could be added and then he starts to listen. Because I do believe, after all of this, and like people think we're saying, I do believe that Deontay Wilder could come back from this. And when you can hit like he can hit, you definitely can come back from it. But I just think you just got to add more repertoire to your game plan. That is it. And drop a lot of these yes-men around you because they ain't bringing you nowhere. And that's the God's honest truth. Wow. And if he's talking about getting rid of snakes, then he needs to get rid of these snakes. Simple as that. Wow. He needs hey. to find out who they really are too, though. You know, I mean, but of course he didn't mean, he didn't, he didn't mention any names, but you know, um, you shouldn't say stakes if, if it's going to remain the same, if you're going to keep the same corner, you know, you so you shouldn't even say that. So everyone's a target. Like who you, who is he talking about? He talking about me, you know? And in that case, Mark <laughs> Breland should feel offended. If you think, Hey, what you said, Deontay, I heard you say snakes. You're not talking about me, are you? You know, those type of things. Um, but for Wilder, I feel that he was knocking people out. And he said, when you have power, you don't need skill. That's the first yeah. thing that Two I seconds. did like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So, you know, yeah. it's what it is. But uh, hopefully he can come back and uh, focus on him and get down to what's real and what's true and uh, keep away from the conspiracies and really get himself grounded and coming up with a good enough game plan to beat Fury because that's his next opponent. So if that happens, it happens. If it don't, it won't. <laughs> so, no. Hey, well, you know what, guys? It's been a fascinating um, debate. I uh, very much enjoyed it, man. We, we've got to do this again, man. Wow. Yeah, man. This, 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 I, this I like, was fun. I like, I like Kurt's channel. I've been subscribed for it for a whole minute. Uh, yeah. uh, ever since he used me for the uh, Andy Drop for Lenny Clips. <laughs> Yeah, man. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate uh, you. Great stuff, man. man. I want to big up um, Counterpunch, Counterpunch Boxing News, Kurt Deville. The fight is right. My guy, Spencer Ferron. You already know the team. Pep Talk. Yeah, nice. yeah Kurt, Kurt, you need to get on, you need to get on um, um, Twitter. I've been trying to find you on Twitter. I can't find you. Can't find you on Instagram. What's the matter with you, man? Get on Kurt Deville. It, it's yeah. Kurt De Well, Instagram is Deville, Kurt. Um, it's Kurt Deville uh, on Twitter. Um, yeah. Right, I'm going to follow you right now, brother. Appreciate it, man. Likewise, I'll do the same to you. Yeah, man. Take care. God bless, man. My All guys. right. God bless you guys. Pip talk. Later. Subscribe, guys. The fight is right. Count punch boxing news. We out you. All right. Thank you, man. You're welcome.